Hi there, my name is Jack Malongaro. Welcome back to my channel. Quite close to downtown Cusco is located the convent of Santo Domingo. It was originally built in uh, 1630 on top and around the Inca temple, destroyed and rebuilt again in 1650, and rebuilt again after a powerful earthquake in 1950. This place is a mix of colonial and the best of Inca architecture. Cori Cancha means the place of gold, and we're gonna have a tour and share all its mysteries with you today. In the early 50s, the Convent Santo Domingo was forced, quote, to open its doors to the public and show all the Inca architecture inside that was uh, hidden for three centuries. As soon as you enter to the main section, turn left to the first chamber located northeast. Here we have the famous smallest carved stone of the Inca Empire that baffles visitors and alike. But there are a couple of stories behind this stone. During the convent reconstruction in the early 50s, archaeologists found a huge iron nail that was used as a hanger by the priest. The second story is that the stone was used to cover a mistake made by the original builders. It is worth mentioning that the Incas didn't have a standard measure for their stones. It was easy for them to fill any gap due to the possession of an ancient secret formula capable, quote, to melt stones. As you can see, its walls typically have a 3 to 5 angle degree combined with an outstanding precision, mortar less walls where each stone doesn't have a square angle, instead they have a curved angles, capable to still remain standing after several earthquakes. In this area we have a well-cut and polished stone used for ceremonial purposes. The three holes that we see at the center bottom of the wall are drains. As you can see on this video, they came from behind the temple. About the ceremonial stone, you can hear some stories of rituals with the offerings of lambs, or the bad ones that they used to sacrifice humans. But nobody exactly knows, even if that ceremonial stone was originally there. Now let's take a look to the top of the second chamber. You'll see a line of small rectangular stones of different lengths. These designs serve to hand the ornamental gold plates decoration in the original temple. Gold for the ancient inhabitants of the Andes were the tears of the sun on Mother Earth. This revered temple during the Inca times was used for religious rituals related to a vanished astro-theological knowledge, as the Hermetic Law says, as it is above, it is below. On this section, you can see several stones made of granite with all sorts of different cuts and perforations. According to mainstream archaeology, fine silver saws, bronze bars, water, sand river, and different sets of hard stones like hematite were the tools used by expert stonemasons. However, we have to take into account the presence of an ancient formula capable to melt stones. We simply cannot rule out the different stories of native people who witnesses the accidental discoveries of ceramics containing a liquid that once poured into a stone turned it into a sort of plastiline. These stories are not myth or legends, instead they are part of a collective memory. In my opinion, the megalithic architects had in their possession a set of tools capable to make fine millimetric cuts on the hard stones like granite, diorite, limestone, and also to vitrify them, and I will show these examples in future videos. Now I am walking to the west section of the temple. You can see around the mixture of colonial architecture with the presence of columns and arcs. I'm going, in my humble opinion, towards the most important chamber, the Venus chamber. Here we are in the biggest chamber in the Coricancha temple. You can see around several trapezoidal niches that used to have gold or silver vessels embedded with emeralds. 
According to historians, the golden sheets hanging on the perimeter walls were as thick as a hand palm. Now, if you're planning a trip to go to Cusco and visit the Coricancha Temple, take your time and carefully look at the corner of this chamber. There are a couple of stones cut on an L shape, a continual megalithic stone to the adjacent wall. If you like ancient megalithic sites like me, you will recognize the technique used in the other side of the world. Yes, we found the same kind of technique in Egypt. How come these architects develop the same technique, the same knowledge? Some people may say, that's a coincidence. Really? A one in a million coincidence? In a time that chronologically doesn't match between Egypt and the Inga's timeline? Instead, it seems that the use of an ancient formula with the preparation of volcanic tuff mixed with an organic mineral formula or ancient geopolymer was vastly used in certain cultures in specific places around the world. This technological achievement that cannot be reproduced with our modern machinery invite us to think that there was a remote civilization capable to circumnavigate the earth and the responsible one for the original design of the Pyrrhus rise map. As we can see, the Venus chamber is a perfect example on how the conquistadors ransacked the Coricancha temple and desperately got as much gold as possible. Using iron sledgehammers, they try to destroy the wall. Take a look at these corners of the wall, showing the degree of a sophisticated technique that didn't apply nor needed any mortar between the perfectly shaped stone blocks. The stones are practically glued to each other, even in the interior. The popular quotes that you cannot insert a blade or paper between the stones, it is true, or I should say, it's a fact. Here I am with my friend Elisa Bless, recording the stones and doing a simple experiment with a ticket entrance. Now we continue, we're going to walk through the double jam door, through the great hallway, and we're going exactly to the back of the Venus chamber. Here we have a 7 plus high wall with several protuberance or knobs, almost all of them located on the bottom right side of the stones. According to the experts, the architects placed large poles of wood underneath them and tied around them with ropes to be lifted and perfectly fitted into the wall. Of course, that's hard to believe, but if you carefully pay attention to a couple of broken knobs, they don't look like your typical broken granite at all. Instead, both of them look like similar to a plastiline property. Not a typical crack or sharp angles. Why is that? If we take into account the presence of a super concrete or ancient geopolymer, seems to me that the material was not dry completely and the weight and maneuvers, movements, may pull in the ropes, made them slide and cut, quote, in a peculiar shape, not typical of any normal or regular stone. Here we have another proof that there was something else, another technology that we can easily call them ancient superconcrete or ancient geopolymer. Because if you look carefully, that one looked like a scoop. For me, this is so evident. This is a scoop taken from a semi-solid material and not from a broken knob of granite stone. If you like my videos, please subscribe because there will be a second part of this video about the mysteries of the Coricancha Temple will be posted soon. Thank you so much.